Hi guys, Simon here again, back from the holidays, had a great time, thanks for all the support and well wishes and everything. Solomon's Tales, continuing on, we left off, Solomon had got his room, got his bike sorted for the next two months, Frozen had gone off to meet her boyfriend, was going to catch up the next day with Solomon. Uh, Solomon had had his heart to heart with Kay, understood a bit more about what was happening with the girls and the, their boyfriends. Hmm. He headed back to his room after his encounter with Kay and the room he got, as I mentioned, Soy 2, top floor. There was a room next to his and couple of rooms below a couple of rooms below that so about six apartments he pulled in to his apartment parked his bike there's a couple of bikes there and right in front the bottom two apartments a couple of tables outside and there was about eight girls all eating dressed in pajamas shorts just you know just as the Thai girls do, they dress in these funny animated pajamas and things, Pokemon and all this sort of stuff. And they're all there, uh, as usual, eating. On closer inspection, uh, a couple of those girls were stunning. Absolutely stunning. Anyway, Solomon sort of smiled and waved and said hi to them all, and they all sort of said hi and they were intrigued they were sort of uh, where was he going who was this guy and up he went the sort of stairs at the end steps concrete steps going up and it's like a long balcony that you walk along and you go into the two rooms at the top but outside Solomon's room well in the corner at the sign was a plastic table and like a patio table and chairs and he, nobody owned those they were just sat in the corner he dragged them along put them outside his room there's room there to sit. Not a pretty sight. The view was straight at the back of the other bars. The Atlantic bar and the other couple. Um, but he could see some sky. And trees off to both sides. So He smoked. He could sit out there. Have a beer. Smoke. There's a fridge in the room. Microwave in the room. All good. Free air con. So anyway. Into his room. Mucks around for a minute. Thinks, right, I'm going to go down to the 7 Eleven, which is literally 30 metres away underneath the bar at the front. Uh, get some beers, get a few provisions. Didn't really need anything in the room, it was all sorted. So, shot down, grab some stuff from 7 Eleven, come back. Again, the girls are all saying hi again, and they twig that he's obviously moved in at the top. Anyway, up he comes, top floor goes in. Throw some stuff, throws a bit of food together on the microwave, comes out, sits at his plastic table. There he is, ashtray, cigarettes, Heineken, cheaper from 7 Eleven. Heineken, bit of food, noodles, and bits and pieces. And he sat there thinking, well, this is going to be a good uh, room. It's a um, great location. It's literally only a couple of hundred metres from Dolphin Roundabout. It's a few hundred metres down to the beach. He's on second road almost, where the bars in front are. It's perfect. Absolutely perfect. It's on the Songtel route that goes around from Dolphin Road, along Beach Road, back up by the Bamboo Bar and back along second road. So, if he doesn't want to take the bike, if he wants an evening, go and get drunk walking street or one of the sides perfect all good hadn't heard from Ning still no message back she's obviously still with her fella the golfing caddy pro or whatever he is I'm sure she'll pop up at some point Frozen's off with her boyfriend Solomon finds himself alone sat there a couple of minutes later three or four girls appear 
Now, yeah, as I said, he sat outside his room. There's this balcony here, room next door. Three or four girls appear. They're all sharing the room next to him. And these are some of the girls from downstairs and the two pretty ones. And they come up onto the balcony, walking along to their door. And of course, the Thai girls, they're nosy. They're like, who is this? What's this? And they're straight over. And they start chatting to Solomon. It's like, quite good English. Turns out that all, well, all these four, and some from downstairs on the middle floor and the bottom floor, they all work Atlantic Bar. Now that Atlantic Bar, is, it's, I think it's still there in 2017. It was famous because it was the only bar that I, uh, Solomon ever came across. Um, and myself as well when I was over there. <laughs> uh, where the girls were dressed in evening dresses as if they were going for a meal or going out to a nice venue. They were really smart in the Atlantic Park and that was their hook to get the customers in. All these girls worked at the Atlantic Bar. Oh, poor Solomon. Four girls living next door to him. <laughs> Remember, he's not there for a hedonistic holiday and he's not there to spend lots of money on girls. But they're nosy. They come and start chatting. And one of them jumps in the other chair. And then before you know it, a couple have gone in the room, pulled some more food out and more chairs have appeared. And it's turning out to be four girls plus Solomon on the balcony, eating and chatting. Mm. How lucky is Solomon? It's just, he just gets luckier and luckier. The, the two pretty girls, both are only about 18, 19. Anyway, they have a chat for a bit and they twig that Solomon's single, that he's got a bike, that he's rented the room, He's told them for two months. It perks their interest, you know. Um, anyway, they stop. Off they go. It's time for work. It's coming up in the evening. It's getting on seven-ish. Out they come. Solomon's still sat there. Out they come. And both those two pretty girls have got those cat suits on. They haven't got the evening dresses. The other two did. But these two have cat suits on. And it, Solomon's like, well... You work at Atlantic Bar, but you normally have dresses and things. And these two with the cat suits. Well, we sort of work at Atlantic Bar. We work at the bar next door. Um, and the one next door to that, and, and the Atlantic. Sort of freelancers? No, it's the same boss for... Okay, whatever. But they had cat suits on. <sighs> Stunning. <laughs> yeah. I could see Solomon, yeah, you know, Solomon's mind was, yeah, we won't go there. Off they go to the bar and they said, come over for a drink. And he's like, oh, no, it's expensive. Start drinking in the bars. I'm going to be broke before I know it. I'll end up getting drunk and then paying a bar fine for someone. And yes, all your money goes really quick. Said, no, I'm just going to have a quiet night and uh, early night and chill. Off they go, he's intrigued, you know, he's thinking I should go up to the bars and just see the girls in situ. But I won't, not, not that night. <laughs> and he actually turns in um, and has an early night. Well, it starts off as an early night. With Asia, the heat, he's got the air con. He's restless, you know, he's been traveling a bit the days before, he'd had to sleep for a couple of hours and, and Patea doesn't go to sleep, it's open all night, all day, pretty much, somewhere in Paris anyway. But he couldn't sleep, a couple of hours, he's like, oh, I can't sleep, I'll get up. He said, but I'm not gonna go to the bars. What he does need is practice on the pool table. And he thinks, literally just round the corner, along second road towards Dolphin Roundabout, is the pool bar Sharkies? I think it was called Sharkies. You know, where there's contests as well, but where they have the girls that are really good, really, really good. He thinks, I'm going to get up, I'm going to go and have a practice, I'm going to knock some balls about. 
have a couple of drinks up there. That's what he does. He leaves the bike, he just generally walk, walks up. Of course, as he walks at the past the end of the Atlantic bar bars, he sort of looks over, spots one of the girls. Up to Sharky's bar, in he goes. Now this is more like a bit of a warehouse inside a factory. It's loads of tables, girls are racking up the balls on the tables, customers playing, you pay for the table per game, and you can buy lady drinks for the girls if you want to play them at pool. I think, you know, you don't have to buy too many, but, and some of the girls who work there are connected to the managers and maybe their boyfriends work there or whatever. Hey, Solomon gets up there, goes in, not many customers, maybe four or five, and it's quite a big sort of bar. So immediately the girls are on him. What he wants to do, he wants to try all these tables out and get to know the tables, see if there's any quirky tables. And he wants to just get a bit of practice, he hasn't played for a, a while. Um, and he remembers from the time before, there was this one girl, really good. Now she was the boss's girlfriend. He spotted her and he beckoned her over, says, can we play, can I play you? Can I try some of the tables? And she remembered him. She sort of like, ah, I remember you. I'm gonna call her Pot, cause she potted everything. Um, he bought a couple of drinks and he, he moved around the tables and he practiced for a few hours and she beat him many many games oh was she good she was really good but she knew every table even if they board slightly roll one way in a corner or one pocket was easier she knew so it was great practice in came a few more foreigners and uh, one came in in particular that Solomon recognized that he played again in one of the contests and that bloke had beaten him I cannot remember the, where the guy was from, but he tended to drink. He was maybe German, Belgium, somewhere in Europe. He was European, but he tended to drink on the other side of Dolphin Roundabout, uh, away from the beachfront. He tended to drink up there, and he would just come in. He was a hustler. He would play the pool, kill a pool contest, the same as Solomon. And he was, he was better than Solomon. He was, um, probably beat Solomon seven out of 10 times, I would say. He was really good. Uh, and he'd gone in this bar, the same as Solomon, to learn the tables. They acknowledged each other, but they didn't play each other. Uh, a bit bad form, really. You know, someone who's, the main competitors, you just, nah, you just avoid them. <laughs> you don't want them learning any weaknesses you have. So there we go. Solomon spent a few hours in there. Pot the girl, very good, very pretty, very lucky manager. And he he, he came out a couple of hours later. Time back to the room for sleep. And again, as he came back down the road, he's looking over. Because that Atlantic bar is just up a few steps, maybe five or six steps, above a couple of shops. There's a row of about three or four bars there. Um, and he's just peeking up, spot the girls, yeah. Heads back up to his room. And yeah, he's still, I'm going to have another beer on the balcony. Yeah, <laughs> you just know he's what he's thinking. Gets up, sits outside, beer. But those girls work in the bars. They probably, if they haven't got a customer, they won't come finishing the bar till two, three, four in the morning. Um, as he sat on the balcony, the music from the bars is literally only 20 meters away. And there's different music at each bar. That's quite loud. And it's probably only about, what, 11 o'clock at night, midnight, and the music's quite loud. A little bit annoying. Has his beer in the room crashes struggles to sleep the music goes on all night only thin window in the front um, yeah really starting to be annoying on the first night mm. 
that's not good and that music goes on all night long anyway Solomon's back everything's set up the next day we'll get to on the next video it's got that competition in soy eight hopefully that guy won't turn up <sighs> catch you on the next one bye bye